So thank you for having me here today. Um, this is, I think, the third time that I've uh, spoken uh, at a Totango conference. Um, I remember the first time that I came to a Totango conference, um, I felt like it was the first time that I had ever actually felt like I was in the room uh, with, I'd say, my people. You know, people who thought like me, who cared about customers, who love technology. And so every year, I'm just excited to be here to talk to everyone. I'm the VP of uh, Customer Success at Cloud Elements. And um, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about what, who I am, uh, what Cloud Elements is. And having the chance to do it all over again, and then the things that I'm working in my path forward. So um, who am I? Um, I am, uh, I oversee at Cloud Elements the CSM group, um, delivery engineers, project managers, tech support. So again, everything pretty much post-sale. Um, in my past, I've, I've owned just sections of customer success, but at my current position, I oversee all of it, um, which is very exciting to me because sometimes your hands feel tied if you only have like one section of customer success. So I feel super excited now that I have that. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about is what's important to me. You, um, people is probably the most important thing. And the reason why is you have to be, you have to assume that you're gonna have a product that is great, right? And if you don't have a product that's great, um, that's a problem in itself. But the people, the people is, is who makes your product. That is the person, the people that are able to rally around, help your customers, and really make a difference. I really feel like people are a differentiator in your business. So if you're competing against other people in the same space, I think your people and the people that you work with and your customer success managers can be seen as a differentiator. Um, Process and product are also important, but again, people is number one. I have a little picture of this my son. He's 12. We were hiking in the Boulder Mountains. If anyone's been to Boulder, Colorado, we were hiking last week, um, and it uh, super fun. I live in Colorado in Louisville, and then this is my team. We went to a stir cooking school, which is in Denver, and we took the afternoon off, and we made a three-course menu and had margaritas and just really feel like once a quarter that it's really important to take my team out and, and do something fun like that, really bond. So what is Cloud Elements? I'm just going to uh, hit on this really quickly, but I'm going to ask just a couple of questions. How many of you customer success managers have customers of your own that want to um, share data with other systems? So whether it's Marketo, HubSpot, a sales CRM, Salesforce, um, Sugar. Um, so Cloud Elements is um, a company that um, actually takes these integrations and makes them very easy for companies to use and put in their marketplace. So for example, typically in the past, you would have to write one-to-one -one integrations or tell your customers, you need to go write the integration for Salesforce or you need to write the integration for HubSpot. Well, Cloud Elements actually is in that space. So we allow customers to write to one hub, like a marketing hub or a CRM hub, and then it only happens once. So you can actually integrate to lots of different systems um, at a much shorter period of time. So that's sort of our, we're in the middle there where we're trying to connect all the data. So this is just a little bit of a visual, but we've got these different hubs. Um, they're, little elements at the bottom. Um, but anyway, we uh, make it very fast for companies to provide that data connection. So I've been very lucky. Um, I don't know how many of you have been lucky in this way, but what if you had the chance to do something all over again with the knowledge that you have now? And I've been able to do that. I, was, uh, I ran the customer success organization at SendGrid. Um, for the last five and a half years. And in October of last year, I was able to um, have an opportunity to work with Cloud Elements, who at the time is probably about three years prior to where SendGrid is today. So I'm able to go back and look at everything I did well, everything that I made mistakes on, and really go back in and figure out what I would do differently and what are some of the things that I would take with me. So I feel like I have a really great um, opportunity to bring what I know to a team that's a little bit smaller but growing really fast. 
So what would I do again? I would still trust my gut instinct. So data is important and data can back it up, but there's nothing to be said about um, really looking to your gut instinct of what you think is the right thing for your company at the time. So again, never be afraid to like make decisions and fail, and then but just make them quickly and then re, you know, reset your set your direction. The other thing is uh, hire people better than me. And somebody was the CEO of SendGrid probably six years ago said to me, Amy, you need to hire someone who's better than you on your team. And I. I was taken aback for a long time, and it took me a while to really figure out what he was saying is not hire somebody better than me, but hire people who, there are things that I'm very good at. One of them that I'm not really good at is project management. So project management, I really struggle with. So hiring good managers and project managers, technologists, was something that I did, and I I really got what he was saying. Hire those people that are better than you in certain areas, not necessarily better than you or you know, would be over you or something like that, but find those places where maybe you have some, that, some skills that maybe you could work on and hire somebody that's really good at that. The other thing is being relentless with hiring the right team members. So that is probably the one thing is don't settle. Make sure that you're looking at the values that your company has. So the ones that um, Cloud Elements have is, you know, customers first. So everybody is customers first. Um, iterate to success, which means um, make small incremental improvements over time. Um, also, passionate contributors. Everyone at Cloud Elements is excited to be there. They're very smart. We hold each other accountable. And nobody can hide. We're 65 people, and if you're not amazing at what you do, everybody knows. So we only hire people that, um, and we know really quickly if they're not a good fit. Freedom, flexibility, and responsibility. So we take this pretty seriously as well. We have. We have parents that work there. We have single parents that work at a Cloud Elements. We have people who work at home two days a week. We take ski days on Fridays in the winter. There's just a lot of things that we do. We allow our team to be very flexible um, and work with today's ever-changing sort of workforce. And then keep it simple. Um, make small improvements, keep it simple, don't complicate things more than they have to be. Um, so those are, those are our values. And then what my leadership value is I try to be as humble as possible. I try and really give credit to my team where credit's due and to coworkers. I really try to be fair, but um, also customized. You know, the idea that you can treat everyone exactly the same and um, that, you know, is not really accurate. You, you need to be fair, but you also need to really look at where your team needs help, where your coworkers can be lifted up, um, really being intuitive that way. So um, another thing would be b building relationships internally. So one of the biggest lessons that I've learned over time is every development team is, um, you know, behind on their releases, there's bugs in the code, the customer, you know, there's never a perfect situation. I run into the same issues all the time of really being able to, you know, hold that customer torch and making sure you're bringing back things to your product and engineering team. But you also have to be reasonable in, in setting expectations. So making sure you're you're really only highlighting or bringing to the table those really important items and not bogging the team down with everything's a fire, everything is, has to be fixed today, everything is, you know, um, all the new features have to be in next week, you know, that type of thing puts a lot of pressure on the engineering team. So really making sure that product and engineering has close ties with customer success is really important because, again, they think what we do is amazing, we think what they do is amazing, and I think as teams, um, and you can really respect each other and find a great working relationship, I've found is, is really important. 
The other one is career map. So have any of you ever heard of a career map or been working with your team or maybe um, your manager on a career map? I think it's super important um, to really be spending, whether you're a manager and you're helping your employees or you would like more mentorship um, in knowing where you're, you're moving in your career, I think it's really important to demand it from your leadership team and then also to provide it. I spend a lot of time going through with my team members on, you know, what do you want to do next? What are those things that can get you to a senior level or a manager level? Or do you want to move into technology or whatever those things might be? And really standing up and making sure your team is being taken care of. And then the last things of the things that I would do again is, you know, sales is no longer king. Um, everyone hears that. Um, customer success is king. Keeping our customers happy expanding, I mean, everyone talks about upsell and cross-sell, but even just keeping our customers coming back every month, every day, no longer do we have years and years worth of, con you know, years and years worth of contracts, um, you need to be performing every single day. Things I wouldn't do again. Um, I would not jump out of a plane again, I don't think. I did that when I was about 26, and it scared the crap out of me and I, don't, I won't ever do that again. Um, the next thing is I wouldn't discount the value of telling your story with data. If you don't have the data that you need to make the decisions, you need to be escalating that to the highest places in your organization. People listen to data. When you go to your finance team and ask for more positions, they want to see the data. Um, when, you know, uh, the engineering team says, you know, I don't, I don't know whether this should be on the roadmap or this should be on the roadmap, you have the data. Everything is about the data. Um, segmentation of roles. I would do that sooner. So segmentation of roles um, between onboarding and um, expansion and relationship management, I would do that sooner. N thinking that you can hire someone that is technical, can do onboarding, is a project manager, is a relationship manager, is tech support, all of those types of things is just somewhat unreasonable once a team probably gets to over eight or ten. Um, the other thing, and I want to make sure I don't run out of time, so is a logical segmentation. How many of you segment how you um, give service to your customer based on what they pay? Okay. Um, that's pretty common, and that's probably the first thing that people think of. One of the other things you need to think about is logical segmentation. Just because customers pay more doesn't mean they need more. And just because customers pay less doesn't mean they need less. Maybe those customers that pay less just need to pay you more. If you start thinking about actually what your customers need and then going back and saying, hey, you know, whether it's a services package or something like that. Some of those customers, they just want to be helped. You can't say they don't need help because they only pay $400 a month. Like maybe they'll pay $3,000 a month if you really do help them. So don't stop just at revenue. Really look at what the customer needs. And then the path forward, because I want to get to a couple of questions. Do I have a couple of minutes for questions? Okay. Um, so power to the people. Um, that's one of our things this year. HR is power to the people, making sure that we get the right people on the bus and we keep them happy. So again, just like customer churn, having churn on your CS team is the worst. Um, you need to make sure you're hiring the right people and giving them the career path that they need and the help that they need to be successful. Um, Implement before implementation. Has anyone ever heard of co-development? Co-development is sort of taking that time to first value to the next level. So how many of you do proofs of concept with your customers prior to them signing a contract? So a, um, a co-development takes that one step further is what if you did took your POC to such a place that they were actually able to implement the product, like go live with a piece of the product when they sign the contract. I mean, that is like ideal. So that's something we're trying out to see how we can really affect um, time to value by actually having a customer be able to put something in production at the time that you close a contract. Um, separation of duties, um, again, just looking at 
where your company is at the time before you separate the duties. Don't take um, any one model. Really look at what your customers need and where your expertise needs to be. If you have a very difficult um, product to implement, you probably need to segment sooner. If not, if you have a pretty easy um, uh, product to implement, such as SendGrid was for me in my last job, you can probably use a general generalist for a lot longer. Um, and again, I'm just going to close out for uh, questions talking about a little bit about who do I follow. Um, some of the people I follow are Lincoln Murphy, um, everyone on the Totango team, Ed Powers, who heads up the Colorado Customer Success Organization. And then if you don't have a customer success organization where you live, you should think about starting one. Um, you can do little things like this um, all throughout the year. We do them monthly in Denver, and it's super fun getting together and really hearing what works for people and what doesn't. So I feel like I talked really fast <laughs> the whole time. Um, did anyone have any questions? Yes. Sure. So um, again, in the two different places that I've, uh, the last two places where I've worked, um, I was able to, um, in, at SendGrid, the application was pretty easy to implement. So I was able to have the CSM do onboarding and relationship management for three, four years um, before I had to really segment out the role and have expertise in each one. But in place like Cloud Elements, that is, it, the product is even more technical and it's very specialized and the onboarding period is probably one to three months. It requires somebody who has an expertise in onboarding and they're measured at first time to value. So again, I think it, it deals with how complex your product is. I think you need to segment quicker or more often in, in smaller swim lanes, depending on how difficult your product is technologically. Yes. I don't think so because what we have is we have the CSM come in pretty quickly um, and they are introduced and they, but they take sort of a back seat. The delivery manager and the delivery engineer take the front seat and they're experts and they are really good at getting a project implemented and the CSM, it's not like at the end of the day they come in and just a brand new relationship. They already know all the history. So it's keeping them involved but in sort of the back seat and then once we get first time to value, even though there might be more implementation, they sort of switch where the CSM takes the front seat the delivery team takes the back seat so that you can have that full relationship management. So we really only have the delivery team working in the first three months with the customer. Yes? Sure. So um, at Cloud Elements, um, we have a partnership with the account executive. So the salesperson who originally sold the deal, they're responsible for building relationships throughout the entire organization with the customer um, in a partnership with the CSM who is making sure they're looking for any opportunities for growth. They're making sure the customer is actually maximizing what they've already bought. Um, and so they work together in partnership and create account plans together to make the customer successful. Yes. We're good. <laughs>